Hello, everyone. Today is Wednesday, March 8th. And I just want to start by saying that I'm going to be looking at the Gospel of Mark, especially why Jesus slept in the storm. Because it looks like today, God may be sleeping in a storm. Here we have a pandemic that is wreaking havoc in the world and saying, where is God in all of this? So I'm going to be looking at that passage. But before I do, I'm going to, first of all, start by saying thank you to all those who have been giving faithfully and sacrificially, of course, because giving at a time like this is a sacrifice. And we really appreciate it, though our giving is a little lower um, than usual, yet uh, your giving is making it possible for the ministry to go on. And of course, those of you who are in need, please do reach out to us. We have mon money allocated for those who uh, need help with groceries. And we'll definitely uh, respond as soon as you contact us at either 450-629-9795 or at info at lavalchristianfellowship.com. Uh, Thank you to all those who are part of the Telephone Support Ministry team. Your, your work is so invaluable at this time. You're encouraging people. You're calling you're praying with them. You're sharing God's word with them. And that is just amazing. We're, I'm really, really thankful for a wonderful team uh, that is uh, involved in helping people at a time like this. And we want to be very sensitive to those who are around us, the most vulnerable. And, um, and when I hear about people who are infected with the COVID-19 and they're all alone and they're in the hospital bed and no one can go visit them, our prayers should be that they come to know Christ at the final hour. They would turn to the Lord and receive him as Savior. May the gospel go forth at a time like this. That's the only blessed hope that people have right now. We are continuing with our online, online rather home meetings, our prayer meetings. They're all on Zoom. And uh, if you go online, you will see to our website, in fact, you will see all the different online home meetings and the different prayer meetings that are taking place throughout the week, please avail yourself of these. Uh, if, if you've never attended a home meeting, and if you've never attended a prayer meeting, don't feel that you can't attend. Um, they're available for you. Just punch in the ID number once you've downloaded the Zoom app and then uh, join us. And you'll be encouraged. And just knowing that there are other believers in the same shoes that you're in. You may feel discouraged right now. You may feel alone. Please join and be encouraged, and just knowing that people are praying with you and reading God's Word together is just so uplifting. Now, this evening, by the way, we're having our weekly Wednesday prayer meeting, and that, that happens at 7.30. There's an ID number. Uh, it's online. It's on our website. It's, on all, it's also on this email that comes with this video. Please join this evening at 7.30. Uh, every week, by the way, parents receive... Um, uh, Parents of kids between from kindergarten to grade six receive a um, material which includes a video plus a lesson so that parents can share God's word with their children. And this video is called What's in the Bible? That's the lesson. That's the whole curriculum. What's in the Bible? It's made by the same people who produced the Veggie Tales. And so it's well made. It's Bible based. We encourage you as parents to avail yourselves of this and to instruct your kids take time to teach them god's word um, please do not uh, think that you can just let your children grow on their own spiritually and just like you take care of their meals you take care of other uh, needs that they may have they also need to be fed spiritually be very diligent with this and these tools are there to help you do this um, if you're not receiving the material or if you need help in using the material please contact us uh, and we'll be glad to help you with that. This coming weekend, something very unusual is going to happen. For the first time that I've ever witnessed in my life, um, Christians all over the world are going to be gathering for Christmas, but not in a building. Uh, this will be, a, not for Christmas, sorry, for Easter. Well, I said Christmas, for Easter and for Good Friday. For the first time without gathering in a building. Uh, that is so unusual. Uh, when you think about it, you know, this is a time when Christians come together all over the world just to remember Christ's death and to remember his resurrection. Yet we can't do that. But our leaders have come up with an original idea, which basically means coming online. And so this Friday at 730, you can join us. Of course, you have to have the Zoom app to do this. Or you can join us via audio. And you join us in celebrating 
Good Friday. That's at 730. We're going to remember the Lord's death this way. We're going to have music. We're going to have testimonies. We're going to have prayer. There's going to be the message of God's word. Please invite your friends, invite your family to come and join us this Friday at 730. And we're going to have a an online gathering of this sort. I mean, this is not church as we would want to have church, as God ordains us to have church in his word. But still, we can have a, a fellowship uh, under the circumstances that still can be beneficial and uplifting. It's this Friday at 7.30 for Good Friday. The message this coming Sunday will be on if Christ be not risen. Um, what would happen if Christ had never ra risen from the dead? That would have been catastrophic. We're going to see why that is so. This coming Sunday, the message will be available online, on YouTube, and on our Facebook page. Uh, you can avail yourself of that, and there will be special music as well this coming Sunday. We thank all those who are contributing with the music. For Anna, who puts these videos together and does all the editing, thank you so much for making this possible. Now let's look at the text that we have before us. It's found in Mark chapter 4, where we read from verse 35 that on a special evening, Jesus said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. And leaving the multitude, they took him along with them, just as he was in the boat, and other boats were with him. And there arose a fierce gale of wind, and the waves were breaking over the boat so much that the boat was already filling up. And he himself was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And being aroused, he rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Hush, be still. And the wind died down, and it became perfectly calm. And he said to them, Why are you so timid? How is it that you have no faith? And they became very much afraid and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? So here's the question. Why did Jesus ask, Why were you afraid? I mean, what would you what would you have said? Well, Lord, look at the storm. We're perishing. This was a an unusual storm. These were experienced seamen, and they knew exactly uh, the body of water, and they knew the area. And so this storm comes out of nowhere, and they're about to be overwhelmed with the waves. And of course, it's just natural that they were afraid. And we're looking at the world today, and we feel very much that way. We feel, what is going to happen to the world? What is happening to our economy? What's going to happen to my job? What's going to happen to my house, to my family, to my parents? What is going to happen? And we may feel very much afraid. And here's the Lord asking us, but why are you afraid? And we're res responding in the same way. Look, Lord, are you sleeping? Are you not aware of what's going on? Now, when the, the Lord was sleeping, was he aware? Well, Jesus is both God and man. He's not just a man. He was not just a teacher with powers to heal. He was not just simply a prophet. He is not definitely an angel. He is God. How do we know that? Because he did something that only God could do. How do we know this? Because in Psalm 107, we read these powerful words that link this passage to that psalm. In verse 28, we read, Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble. What kind of trouble? And he brought them out of their distress. He caused the storm to be still. So the waves of the sea were hushed. Then they were glad because they were quiet. Now we never have this kind of event happening under any circumstance in the Old Testament. You never see something like this. So when the psalmist wrote this, he was basically basically being prophetic because this passage has to do with what God does. Only God could calm the storm in this way. Only God could bring uh, tranquility in this, in this kind of storm. He's the one who can hush the waves and the wind. And so when it happened in the days of Jesus, the disciples remember this psalm. That's why they said, who is this 
man, that even the winds and the waves obey. You see, God came in the flesh, and, and, and in the flesh, he was still God. His rights were put away. His majesty was put on hold. His glory was left behind because he had nothing that made him glorious as far as his being is concerned. He was just like any every other human being, but he was still God in the flesh. And therefore, what happens there is that God was the Lord Jesus was displaying his divinity. He was displaying his power. And I know some of us would say, why doesn't God hush the storm today? Why doesn't he just bring an end to what he's doing right now? What is happening rather right now? This will end, of course, after it's run its course and after it has accomplished what God wants to accomplish in this time. The storm that we're experiencing right now is bringing many people to repentance. Many people are calling out to him, just like the disciples were crying out to the Lord who they thought was asleep, but wasn't really asleep because God can't sleep. Physically, he was sleeping, but not as God. And therefore, many are crying out to God thinking that he's not aware, he's not concerned with our situation, but he is concerned. The writer to the Hebrews says that he is our great high priest that feels what we feel. He is touched by the feelings of our infirmity. So therefore, everything we go through, our fears, our anxieties, our concerns, our worries, he is aware of them. And not only is he aware of them, but he understands us perfectly because he is the God-man. In heaven, he is still the God-man, just that he has a glorified body right now. And just like he was God-man on earth, he is God-man in heaven. And as God, he can hush the storm. As man, he can feel what we feel. And so he is the perfect one that you, you can turn to. It's not an angel that you're turning to. It's not simply a teacher or a prophet. You don't need to turn to a saint. No saint can do what Jesus can. No saint can fulfill the role that Jesus fulfills because he alone is the God-man. He, he alone can hush the storm and he alone can feel your fear and give you an answer for that fear. And the question he asks you now is this. Why are you afraid? Why do you not have faith? Trust him in the storm. He will hush it if you trust him. God bless you. We'll see you this evening at prayer.